Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney Justice for All Blind. Here we go. It's what I've been dreading. Uh, the first trial of this episode. I'm a little bit nervous about this one because unlike every other trial we've been to so far, even in the first game, I feel like I'm not as prepared. I hope that whatever testimony happens will, will set me up for knowing what to do because right now I'm at a complete loss. Like, I'm still not sure if I get what's going on here at all. I obviously know that Max probably didn't do it. But the rest of it's a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> so maybe I won't have any cool conspiracy theories yet. Yo, you're gonna throw away all your cards before I'm done talking. Girl, what's up? Did you wear pants at least to court today? Well, we'll find out. Good morning, Max. He doesn't look too happy. It's okay, darling. You look absolutely beautiful when you're distraught. So, I mean, to me, it's fine if you stay like that. What? <laughs> Max? Mil milk. What? <laughs> milk was a bad choice. What are you talking about? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. Oh. Stage? Don't worry. There won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I, I guess. Nick? Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties! What? <laughs> you don't think I should fly, do you? No, I don't think that's gonna impress anybody, actually. Uh, maybe except me. Well, wait, are you wearing pants? That's the question. If you're not, then I say yes. You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. Well, they'll definitely get warm if you don't have pants on, like I suspect. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? What? We just said we can't do that. I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying in fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no one needs to fly today. Nick, what's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. Yeah, if only his lover was here to see it. Oh, wait, what? Too soon? Oh, fine. Forget it. Never mind. We're gonna see my other lover right here. You know, the one with the whip. No, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about the judge. <laughs> Where is he? There he is, girl. How you doing? Oh, wait, what? Wait, what? What happened? What, what just happened? I didn't press a single button and it went really quickly. He was starting to say something and I was going to ask him how his head was. Yo, girl, are you, are you rushing my shit? Please, calm down. Your honor, get on with it. Oh, sorry. I just realized the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. Wait, I, I honestly didn't press a button, so I don't know if that was supposed to just go by our head. So? Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yeah, get with the program. He has a real name. Yes, Your Honor, he does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. Fine, then let's do it. It sounds more friendly. Hmm, I wonder if that's to our advantage. Probably not. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Well, honey, since I won the last one and you're obviously still salty about that, yes, I do plan on it, actually. Hold on to your your bras. Multiple, I hope. That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. Of course you do. Now what? It did not count, do you hear me? <laughs> how, how, how weird that you would mention the count at a time like this. You mean your grandfather, right? You mean Dracula? She must still be upset about what happened. You think, Phoenix? It's okay. You have no chance. Zero. Zilch. Nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of Von Karma to lose at anything. Well, too bad you already did. Uh, and your dad before you. Wait, what? Too soon? Oh my god, I love this face Maya makes. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Yeah, you said it. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Man, if you weren't so attractive, I would really have a lot more bad things to say about you. <laughs> I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. But me Guilty? Oh my god, she's already at the whipping stage. We haven't even started. It will be my ultimate revenge. She's real pissed. 
Her dad is gone, you know. The prosecution is finished. Let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. You didn't even say anything about the case. You were just yelling at me the entire time. Jeez. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Here we go. Oh yeah, I had a feeling Gumshoe would be here, so it's all gonna be crap, is it? Because he never tells the right the right story ever. It's all just hogwash, isn't it? Poor Gumshoe. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, detective. Ew! This savage lady! Yo, someone stop her! Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to it. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir. All right, detective. You may proceed with your testimony. Let's have it. It's probably gonna be all crap, ain't it? Sorry, Gumtree, but that's just the way it usually goes. Details of the events. Okay, tell me about it. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. Okay, that seems okay. All of the circus performers gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice section broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. You know, it just dawned on me. We actually don't have the autopsy report or anything, do we? We never got it. Yeah, no, we don't have nothing. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll get it now? Well, I hope so. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. Ugh. God. Alright. I see. He was beaten to death. Oh, thank you, thank you, Dick. Thank you. Jeez. We need this. Alright, fine. A bit late to get it, but I guess that always happens. A blunt object. Hmm. Can I just quickly look at this, please? Because I just want to make sure I know what it says. Time of death, 1015. So let's remember that. Blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Okay. I got it. We got this. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Man, do lawyers often go into trials not knowing as much as we don't know right now? And they just try to hope that they can find something while they're in there? That's crazy if so. I don't know that much about lawyers, to be honest. All right, um, I'm gonna press everything because that's what I usually do. <laughs> Until they tell me not to. And by the way, people did allude to the fact that there might be something coming up where it actually says that you can't do that. So I'm gonna have to really think carefully then. Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. That's not a blizzard. The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground till the next day. Hmm. The snow. Let me see. There's gotta be more to this. Well, we had the footprints, didn't we? To worry about as well. There weren't any any killer footprints. Hmm. Eh? What's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. You do? Oh, okay. I guess I do. <laughs> um. Alright, maybe this. Let's look at this. It piled up. So he's got the footprints in the snow, uh, his footprints, and there's no others. Did it pile up afterwards? That's the thing. I'm wondering if that's what they're going for here. Hmm. Let me take a look at something else real quick. Found at the scene. You can't really do anything with the hat. The papers, I don't know if that's gonna be in it. Hmm. Let's just keep going for right now. I looked at it, Phoenix. It's okay. Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? All the circus performers gathered in the big top to practice their routines. I'd also probably believe most of that. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and staff were there. Regina and the Animal Tamer, Moda Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course, the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and his victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot. Regent the Tiger was there as well. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? Why is he important? Oh, come on, don't tell me. <laughs> when I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Oh no, Gumshoe had that knockoff watch. Oh, poor baby. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. Oh no. Practice session broke up around 10. That also seems likely. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was playing with Regent, while Mo went back to his room tired from work. 
Ben the Ventriloquist went to the front gate, absorbed with his own world. The Ringmaster and Max went off to the Ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately, huh? That's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage! Why didn't you say that, Phoenix? I guess we can't, really. Mirror took itself took place in the plaza in front of Lodging House 1015. Oh, I'm still not coming up with much. I've got an idea, but I don't know if it's right. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 1015. Uh, 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 okay. Not a problem, pal. We got a witness that told us how the whole thing went down. Ow! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm, all right. We'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? Victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doorknob. The thing that's... We don't even know what's in the box, though. They keep alluding to it. Am I going to know what's in there eventually? A wooden box? That's right. Yeah, that thing... Are we going to know anything about it? Because it wasn't there when we looked. The victim must have been carrying the box when he was killed. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked? Oh, here it is! Oh my, okay. We're just getting this now? Ugh. This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Oh, shoot. Um, wait, hang on. Thankfully, they'll let you do this now. Can I see anything special about this? The victim was hunched over this 20-pound box. It was locked by a small key, which we don't have and don't know anything about. Okay. So what would our question be? Honestly, I would want to know about the contents. Do you know what was in it? Yeah, I'm going to do that. That makes most sense to me. Do you mind telling us what was inside the box? Well, when we found a box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Then how is it 20 pounds? I guess the box itself was heavy? What is that? It looks like a bingo marker. Bottle? What is that, detective? Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What? What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pardon me? This is just getting weirder and weirder. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked with the big box? There was only one little bottle in that huge box? Did someone take this stuff out, I'm wondering? I wonder if that has some sort of special meaning. Pepper? What the hell? Well, I'm real gobsmacked now. Cause of death was... I mean, now that this... So I'm noticing, too, that, like, when the stuff comes up in red, there's probably stuff you gotta, like, remember or think about. So I'm gonna obviously press this as well. Tell me about that. According to the autopsy murder, the murder weapon... The autopsy murder. The murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? That's the other thing. What was the murder weapon? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it's something that the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, no, no. I bet he made it disappear with magic. Ha ha ha. Oh, gumshoe. Wait, what? We're at the end of this, and I haven't figured it out yet. Hang on. <laughs> well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. Are you sure? I'm not sure about this. I guess that's all we're gonna get out of gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're gonna get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Alright, it's either gonna be Mo or the ventriloquist. I hope that we'll get something better out of him. Eh? I'm not even off the stand yet! Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. Ooh. Man, why you gotta- Why you gotta be so rude to him? Come, she don't have to take that crap. I don't know, but wrapped up is such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. That poor gumshoe. He needs his own damn game, doesn't he? Just agree with me if you do. I, th I think I think he does. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. Oh, here we go. Is he going to talk or is the, vent is the dummy going to talk? I'm nervous about this. I wonder if Trila will show up on the stand as well. He's probably going to have to. Yeah, he's there. Oh, come on, you can't punch someone in court. Where's the bailiff? Get Judge Judy on this fool. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My full name is Trey Loquist. I'm an employed as an opera tenor. Uh, excuse me. 
The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman, ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine. I'll grace you with song. Ahem. Me, 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 me. The world of the law, exciting and daring, guilt or innocence, decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? Um. Please tell me that she's going to whip that dummy. Because I would like to see it. Oh, everyone's speechless. Oh, it had a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. I don't know. I like the part about him dressing like a woman. Trilo, you know better to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You'd think you had the sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I want to punch you in the f <laughs> on the off chance swelling would help. You know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order, order, I demand to know who the witness is. D don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trilo handle this. You're sure you want to do that, Pee-wee? Okay, fine, whatever. I don't know. I'm not worried about you one bit, I'm- Oh! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness, so let's proceed. No, I think this is against the law or something. Oh, Jesus. Fine. What you witnessed. Oh, this will be good. Once practice was over, I lanced the test with a stooge. I mean, clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. Whoa, 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 what's this now? That's when I saw Max heading toward the scene of the crime. Let's look at this real quick. I just want to take a look. There's the there's sign right there. There's Ben in, with his hand up the dummy's butt, and the dummy's making a crazy face. That doesn't look like Max, really, does it? Where's all his hair and stuff? He's got the hat. He's got the roses. But didn't he have three things on him? Maybe we just can't see it in the picture. Hmm. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. I bet that made you happy. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You sure of that? Without a doubt, he had his hand he had on his silk hat, cloak, and white roses and the dumb oh wait, sorry. Silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. So he had everything? Hmm. Hang on. Was it roses or was it yeah, no, they're there. Ah, damn it. Hmm. Still there's something weird. Alright, fine. How can you mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? True. That's enough. I think we all get the picture. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> Just one thing, you said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Ooh. That didn't happen, did it? Hmm. What the shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the criminal. Why's that? Here's absolute proof. Uh, a silk hat? Well, anyone could be wearing the stuff as the thing. This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Uh, anyone could have taken it, though. Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene, unless he took it. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your, prosecut <laughs> your prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. That didn't mean anything. Just threw, you could, anyone could just throw the hat there. I'm sure he has more than one. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. Phoenix, don't stand for it. Come on. All right, fine. Well, I'm, I'm pressing everything. I'm assuming they're going to tell me when I can't do it, right? Once practice was over, I left tent with the stooge. I mean clown. Tell me about this, then. The clown. You talking about Mo? Of course I'm talking about that old fart. He's so pathetic I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. Once practice was over, he was nine-tenths of the way to killing over for good. Poor guy. We didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being a first-place loser, that guy's ahead of the pack. Hmm. And what happened? Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched and went over to the plaza. Alright. What did you do then? I went over to the plaza to do some thinking. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking in your nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Objection! What you gonna say? Mr. Phoenix Wright, I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. But I'm a good thunker. At least my teachers always said I was. <laughs> oh my god. That's when I saw Max heading toward the scene of the crime. Oh, sorry. I didn't have to read that again. I already read it. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? 
Of course I'm sure. How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup? Get the wax out of your ears, lawyers nowadays. You're like talking to a brick wall. Max three-piece getup. Jeez, could you be any more dense? All together now. Silk hat, cloak, white, roses. Thank you. Nick, I think you should put a little bit more effort in preparing your questions. Well, I'm sorry. Who's the only one heading that way? How could that punk not be the killer? Well, this seems suspicious here. You saw Max and only Max, right, Trilo? Well, that can't be then. Wait a minute. Because weren't they... Wait a minute. Is he talking about before or after? Because Max and Russell had to have been seen together at some point. There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm. That makes quite a bit of sense and makes Max one suspicious character. Because weren't they together and then Russell le like left alone? Yeah, there's definitely something here. I think I might be right about this. Uh, this this actually confers what I was thinking. How could it just be him if, number one, they were together at some point, and they were together in the room, and then Russell went out by himself? So did he really see Max by himself? I don't think so. Hmm, I'm gonna try this. That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this? Oh, I think I might be right about this. Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? It's gotta be Russell, right? Because they were together. I think I'm right about this. I hope so. That's the victim. That's correct. If Trila was at the entrance to the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Ah! Obviously the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness. No, he didn't. Anyone could have seen him. Anyone could sense could have figured that out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Exactly. We saw this before. Oh, he has pants on. It's too bad. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? Because not him, duh. Anyone could be wearing his crap. He didn't have his crap on in the room. So he must have left it somewhere. God, these people. It seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. What? And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. We only do have Max's word. Shoot. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now let's move along with the testimony. Trilo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Yes. R Regina. Is that it? Well, we're going with that, I guess. Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah. I think so. I don't know anymore. Oh. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Hang on a minute. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. Is this the one I didn't press? I think it is. Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Huh? I think it was around, I'd say, a bit after 10.30, I think. Practice ended at 10 p.m., so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I, 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 I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Well, well uh, the truth is... Well, you shut up, you big nose dope! Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in that weather? Because it's freezing! Well, maybe you were waiting for someone? Wh what Who said we were waiting for someone? Oh, here we go. Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can do- we can all do without your off-handed theories. No, I don't think so. But, this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm onto something. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Who do you suppose the witness is waiting for out in the cold that night? I bet I do know. I bet I absolutely know it was her. They were hoping to see her. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. Now I'm getting somewhere with this. And one person only, he was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. Oh my god, his head just fell off. Whoa! You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Oh, no. Oh, he's back together again, is he? That's a cool trick. 
Is this true? Well, I, uh, 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 you can't really ask me that question. No, you ha- come on. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw. Don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. What? All right. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid him a second thought. Oh, there he goes again. That makes perfect sense. Not what? Ugh. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. No, he didn't. He was waiting for his love. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than Max heading to the scene. Ow! There is absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um, um... I guess you got me. Alright, alright. I'll spill the beans for real this time. Mm-hmm. It's true. I was waiting for Regina. A pain! Oh, that was Ben, sorry. Don't volunteer things! Mr. Quiz, tell us the truth this time. And I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to- Propose? Oh. Well, that's rabble-inducing. What's the matter? You think the humans have a monopoly on marriage? That- the, the matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. No, I think we should. You're the judge? I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. Huh. Thanks to the bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. Hey, look, you started it. This, this isn't my fault. About the proposal. Great. Oh, I can't wait to read this. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Was that ring we found? It was, wasn't it? It said from T to R. It was from Trilo to Regina, and the monkey stole it somehow, so... Oh, no! You know the monkey's gonna come into this, too, at some point! You were going to propose. You, a puppet? Don't be so obtuse! Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love! Uh, I, I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her, too. Oh my god, everyone wants to propose to Regina. <laughs> Even me. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. It's fine. Okay, Mr. Wright, please continue. <laughs> Everyone's crazy. Did you hear that? His sigh seemed a little wistful. He's thinking about Regina. Oh, God. If she ever gets on the stage, we're in trouble. I think the only one that won't fall for her is frickin' Francisca. Maybe she will, too. I don't know. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. Okay? By proposing, me proposing marriage, correct? To Regina. Of course that's what I meant. What kind of stupid question is that? I wasn't gonna propose that we come with some outlaw biker gang together. Why not? That sounds fun. Right, Ben? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it? That's the truth. I even had something to give to her. Well, let's hear about this, because I'm pretty sure I'm holding it. What was it exactly that you plan on giving her? <laughs> A big wooden- wait, what? You know exactly what I was gonna give to her, numbskull. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question. What was it? Oh, even she's getting upset. You're gonna die when you hear it. It's an engagement ring. And- Oh, there goes her bra. Oh, there goes the judge's underwear. Oh, everyone's crazy. <laughs> wow, those two nearly fell out of the chairs. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Francesca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. Oh, no, what? P pain equals bad. No, push forward. Ba Come on. Phoenix, we still got our underwear on. Pull up your pants. We got this. It may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a puppet has ever proposed to a human being. Ow! I advise you to cut this argument short. What, we can't? Oh, come on. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Oh, we won. Okay, good. Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not Scientology. Oh, sorry. Scientology? Yes. Not sociology. Scientology. That's what this is based on. Jesus Christ, I need to learn how to read. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bathrobe. I plan on giving an engagement ring to Regina. Oh, 
Okay. Do I... I ugh. Should I press this now, even though he's revised it? An engagement ring? Uh-huh. It's actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina's gonna love it. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's gotta be something I can catch him on. I think there will be. Kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to repose and give it to her. Okay. Whose pocket was the ring in? Mine, of course! What a stupid question! You gotta be kidding me! You think Ben could pull that off? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. We're really... You don't have to apologize for that. He's the one that should be apologizing. Then why are you hitting him? Oh my god. This is, this is madness. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. So you went to the lodging house to give it to her? That's right. I tried to give it to her during practice so many times that I lost count, but that uppity snob kept getting in the way. Uppity snob? You couldn't be talking about me, Maximilian Galactica. When I get a hold of him, I'm gonna saw his woodblock in half and not with magic. Max, shut up. Well, they always say that love creates rivalries. So what about this present? In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Well, I don't think you do, because I'm pretty sure we're holding it. So let's get him on that at least. So you're still thinking of trying to give it to Regina? Of course I am. I spent three months' salary on this thing. I'm not going to give up that easily. Hmm, I wonder how much he receives for appearing in the circus. Probably way more than he deserves. How about it, Nick? I think it's about time to unwrap this toy's testimony. That's the spirit, Nick. Give him hack. Uh-oh. The judge has that day's look again. Maybe he should get out more. All right, so. Don't be so surprised I was going to propose to Regina. Uh, so we want to... Yeah, so we want to present that last part that says he still has it with him. Because we have it. The one where he says he actually has it. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket right now. No, you don't. No, I don't think you do, boy. Here we go. Trilo, do you mind if I show you something? What is- oh, that was Ben, sorry. What are you talking about? Uh-oh. Looks like they've gone to double team me now. Ew. Do you recognize this ring? Ah! That's- that's- that's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Oh. Blah, blah. What is going on here? That, that, that's, that's... Ben, say something! Uh, don't put me on the spot like that, Trilo. I found this in Money's room. Money's room? You mean a room they put money in, like a bank vault? Ha! That filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. It's just a monkey. Nobody cares. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey in every sense of the word. Ah, oh, I see. Well, then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny? Things? Trilo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was, uh, that time, you, you know, that night, the, the night of the crime. What did you just say? There goes one of her bras. Details, I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, uh, I guess you might uh, be able to say that. The ring might have, well, well, could have been taken around that time. Whoa. Oh, this is, this is, oh! So they were completely distracted, so there's no way they know who it was. That's what we're gonna get them on, isn't it? Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever. It has nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Now, Trilo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trilo Quist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trilo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring snatching money monkey. I, I reversed that, but don't worry about it. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? Of course not. He's got no legs. They don't work. It's all the slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What point could it possibly be? Ben's testimony has a flaw, of course. Not that he doesn't exercise enough. Who would pick that? 
There's a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. C contradiction The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza. Oh, there, there it goes. That bra's just destroyed. Boom! Exploded. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. That's true. Interesting, Mr. Wright. What? What you gonna object about? Well then tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Probably. Well, he obviously didn't see the victim the ringmaster arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He is blinded by his rivalry with Max. Oh god, this is great. Fight, fight. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity toward the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get that dork face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him. No doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw on that night. More testimony? I told you so many times you'd think you'd know my story's not changing. You've already changed your story, stick boy, and I'm sure it'll change some more. That's right, Phoenix. Where there's one lie, there's usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah. Here we go. My, I can't believe we're doing this again. Witnessing Max. All right. I'll give you that. I was waiting for that night for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I'm getting you on this. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right. Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then Money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five-minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross examination Oh, I'm going to. You just wait. You just sit down. Here we go. I'll give you that I was waiting that night for Regina. I don't think I need to press that, do I? No. That doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza. Now I'm gonna press this, though. So you saw Max coming out of the big top that night? Of course, that's where I saw him coming from. I was standing at the entrance to the tent the entire time. I guess that makes sense, especially since he was waiting for Regina. All right. Showed up after I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. Hmm. About what time would you say these events took place? You're one of the dumbest people on the planet if you can't figure that out yourself. You already know to practice finished promptly at 10. And you already know that I went to the lodging house right after practice. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to know around what time it was I saw him. Just add 10 more minutes. I'm sure you can do that. Now, what time was it? Indeed, what time was it? What time was it? Let me think about that for a second. Mm. Wait a minute now. It was 10, 10 p.m. Ah, uh, yes, that sounds about right. Sounds about right because that's about the time I saw Max on the scene. Said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. Maybe it wasn't him then. You ever think of that? So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You got something to add? Let me guess. That's not it, Trilo. You say good evening at night. Uh, I'm sorry, Trilo. My god. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist act outside the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes his performance, you should know better. There's gotta be something wrong with this bit of testimony. There is. Hmm. Gosh. I don't know. Ben's half of the comedy act. I, I want to almost press that, but I don't think that's right. Isn't that a bit strange to you? <gasps> I think I know what now. 
I know why. I, I almost had the reason in my head, but it's like, why would he be nice to him? Aren't they fighting? Why would he even say good evening to him? Like, on purpose. Maybe that's the angle we're going for. If you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? Oh my god, I can't believe I just got it. It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand, but didn't they have a bottle fight earlier? Maybe you should think of having some proof before f your lips start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason that Trila would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I go about proving- The bottle, the bottle, the bottle. It has to be. Bluffing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you've already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. Wait, do I have to go back? I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactic at the scene. I said good evening to- I think this is what I'm gonna do here. So they were- okay, so it was like prompting me to do something there, but I wasn't sure what. Here we go. Trilo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. That's right, it was the same day. It wasn't that big of a deal, it was just an argument. A disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. Oh, there he goes. Explosion! Oh, look at this. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? What? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Ow! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is, is on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There's absolutely no way they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on the stand. There's no way a puppet this lewd would just be up and say good evening to a rival. Boom! Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, 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 I didn't tell a single lie, honestly, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Quist, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? I think he saw someone else. It's gotta be someone else. You know who I actually think? And I don't know if this is right. I have a theory about this. I bet I know who it was. I bet I know. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know who- okay. I'm just gonna go with this. I think I'm right. It is my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who we said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. What? what If he had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there's only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. It was someone wearing his hat and coat, like I said, and I think I know who it was. That is why Trilo made the effort to greet whoever it was he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Uh, what in the world? You... Would the defense kindly explain who it was Trilo saw that evening? Mm-hmm. Because if you so remember, Max is like, It's cold out there, sweetie. You shouldn't go out without a coat. Guess who was wearing his stuff? I bet you I'm freaking right about this. Yeah! Considering the ill temper of the witness, there's only one person he would greet. It must be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. No! God damn it! Would you put that away, please? Just get it back in your robe. No, Your Honor, it's not Regina. If it was Regina, Trila would have given her the engagement ring as a present. That's right. Oh, yeah. I suppose you've got a point there. God. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trilo. Isn't that correct? Uh. Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Boom! Oh, there he goes. It's broken for good. I wish. Order, order! How do you respond to this? But wait a second. Well, at first I thought it was the old man. But, 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 once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. No, I don't think so. Get out of here with that. Christ. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. 
Was it Maximilian Galactica? Or was it the ringmaster, once Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? All right, this is getting old. Come on, man, you gotta remember them by now. Here we go again, everyone all together now. Ow! She just whipped him apart, oh my god. Yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and cloak. Anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was him? Could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. Oh, there, oh, there goes the bra again. Jeez. Miss Von Karma? Hold him up, girls. All right. Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it's impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we finally want a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. What now? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you mean by that? She's got another witness and it's probably the clown. You merely establish one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Yep. We did not We did know the clown was coming, we just didn't know when. Your Honor, the prosecution will provide beyond a shadow of a doubt an answer to that question and evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible. Sorry, I pressed that too fast. Might be. Very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. Thank goodness. These are getting too long for me. Uh, it's just gonna have to happen sometimes that if I ever get too tired to go on with these, like, courtroom shenanigans that I will cut in the middle. I didn't do it this time. It might happen in the future. It depends. This one has been particularly hard on my voice, I must say. But I'm having so much fun. This is getting really good. I think I'm onto something here. Finally. I was really worried. So in the next one, let's figure out... Oh, God, another voice. What Mo's gonna say. This'll be fun. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.